What's good everyone? This is my review of the Hoka Solomar. Now, the Hoka Solomar is a shoe that is a little different than what I normally go for. Generally speaking, I focus on shoes that are specific for running. Moreover, I usually go for shoes that are specific for a certain type of running. You know, something with a little more cushioning, a little heavier for long runs, for easy efforts, something a little lighter for up-tempo training, and then of course, the carbon-plated race shoes, so race day. The Hoka Solomar is just a tad different because it's more of an all-rounder. It's a jack of all trades. And Hoka says that the Solomar is ideal for running, but it's also ideal for training, like hitting the gym or walking or an everyday shoe. So some of you, like me, may be thinking, do I really want an everyday shoe to go running in? And the answer is maybe. Oh, and Roadrunner Sports was good enough to send me the Hoka Solomar for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me. They're not gonna see the video before you do and all the standard disclosures. Anyway, these are my thoughts. So yeah, I was a little apprehensive, a little apprehensive about running in a shoe that is made for going to the gym and walking and everything else. But it is still a running shoe, so I wanted to give it a chance. And I do go to the gym, I do walk. So it'd be nice to have a shoe that was designed and is good at doing everything that we do on a daily basis. Oh, and if you did want to pick up a pair of the Solomar, you can buy it on Roadrunner Sports for $125. That's right, it's only $125. It's pretty affordable, especially compared with some of those specific running shoes that I was talking about earlier. And the Solomar is actually pretty light, pretty nimble. Hoka claims that a US men's size 9 weighs it at 8.5 ounces or about 241 grams. However, in my size, a US men's size 12 and a half, it tips the scale at 9.5 ounces or 269 grams, which is pretty light. So first impressions, as I took this out of the box, I was like, this shoe feels good. But unfortunately, I still didn't have high hopes for it. But we'll get more into that. The Solomar does have a six millimeter drop. However, there are no published stack heights. But just looking at it, you can see that the stack heights are pretty minimal. They're not what you would normally expect from a Hoka shoe. And because there are no published stack heights, I am free to estimate. And I'm gonna say maybe 19 millimeters in the forefoot and 25 millimeters in the heel. And because of how narrow the stack height looks, that's another reason that I thought, Ooh, my body needs a little more protection. I'm not sure how this is gonna work for me. But hold on, we're gonna get to the ride in just a second. Let's let's keep going over the specs. Let's start at the top, let's work our way down. The heel collar is, I mean, it's padded. It's not overly padded, it's not super thin, but then it's not a daily trainer where we want a little more padding, and it's not a race day shoe where we want a lot less padding. It's right there in the middle. And as you can see, this is like a right in the middle heel collar cushioning amount. It's very comfortable. The heel counter is not as rigid as we would expect on other running shoes. I can press it down a little bit. Now, it's still rigid, there is still some reinforcement there in the back, but it's not like a solid plastic heel counter that we get on some other shoes. You can see I can press this down if I press a bit harder. We've got this extended heel pull right on the back, just give you something to grab onto to pull the shoe on. Can't say that I actually ever use this heel pull to pull the shoe on, but if I wanted to, it's there. The upper is a stretchy mesh and it's made using recycled materials. Oh, and the Solomar is vegan. So if that's something you look for in your running and training shoes, there you go, Solomar's for you. The tongue is medium in thickness. Again, just like the heel collar, it's not super thick like a daily trainer. It's not razor thin like in a race day shoe. It's right there in the Goldilocks zone, right in the middle. The tongue is not gusseted, but we do have a lace loop right on the top of the tongue, which for me stopped the tongue from sliding either way on the shoe. And I didn't have any issues with anything like the tongue moving around as I ran. We got very minimal overlays. We got the Hoka branding right here. We got some rubber overlays along the eyelet chain just to give it a little more support, a little more Hoka branding right here on the medial side, but that's about it. I guess it makes sense not to overdo it with overlays and knickknacks because that would just add weight to the shoe. Clearly Hoka is trying to keep it nice and light. Coming down to the midsole, Hoka is using a compression molded EVA. And you can see by looking at the shoe, we have a late stage meta rocker, which basically means that the transition zone is right in front of the metatarsal heads, which contributes to making this shoe have a stable base and good forefoot support, which yes, we want when running, but we definitely want it when we're in the gym, when perhaps we're doing other exercises where we need a lot of stability on our feet. If we look at the shoe from the top, we can see we do have quite a bit of sole flare, which again, just contributes to the stability of the Solomar. And I found it to be a very stable shoe, both when running and when taking it to the gym. Now, if we look at the outsole, we can see we've got some strategically placed rubber, a little bit up here on the front, a little bit here on the heel. However, if you look at my pair right here in the middle, we can see we've got a little bit of wear on the exposed midsole material. Now, when these were new and I was first looking at them, I thought this rubber is a little far forward. I know that me personally, I don't land this far forward on my shoe. And the evidence of all this wear right here in the middle supports that. And again, on the rubber, on the heel portion of the shoe, when I'm running easy and I'm heel striking a little more than I do when I'm running faster, touch down on this lateral heel edge. And if you look at it, you can see I do have some wear on the rubber, but I've also got some wear on the exposed midsole. So I thought maybe Hoka is doing the same type of rubberized EVA that they've done on some of their other shoes. I have the, the Mark 5, 
right down here. And if we look at the bottom of both of these, well, now that I'm looking at it in the camera, I really can't tell a difference. But when I press the bottoms of both of these, there is a distinct difference. Obviously you can see it, the Mark V doesn't have any outsole rubber. It uses that rubberized EVA. And just by comparing the two, by touching both, I can tell that the Solomart does not have a rubberized EVA, which means nothing other than it's not rubberized. Perhaps it will wear down a little quicker. Perhaps it will wear down just a little bit here in the middle and then the rubber will take over and protect the shoe. But either way, as of the making of this review, Video, I've run about 40 miles in the Solomar and I guess the wear for the midsole wear isn't really that bad and you can see we've got no cutouts coming through the base of the midsole so that also contributes to a little more stability. We've got full foot coverage all the way through the base of the foot. So as far as ride goes, my first run out in the Solomar, I was a little, a little put off. It was a little firmer than I normally like. But by the end of that first run, I was feeling a lot better about the shoe. Now during my testing period, I've done easy runs. I pick up the pace. I've done a tempo run in this shoe and the lightweight really contributes to making it feel light on the foot. So it feels like it can move forward pretty fast. I also like not having a plated shoe. Having plated shoes have their place in our lives now, but it's still refreshing to have a shoe that it doesn't have a plate in it and still feel light and nimble underfoot. Now, because of how firm I thought the ride was, I really didn't want to go too far in this shoe. In fact, the longest run that I did in this shoe was 11 miles. However, after my 11 mile run, I came back feeling pretty fresh. I thought my legs were going to feel a little more beat up than they did after running 11 miles just because of the stack height. There just isn't the stack height that I'm used to on some of my other shoes. However, I was pleasantly surprised that my legs felt good. So ultimately, from the beginning, I judged this shoe just based on its appearances, based on that thinner stack height than I'm used to. It was marketed for running, but also doing other stuff. And that sort of put me off a bit. But after running in this shoe for quite a while, I have actually become a fan. And this is going to keep its place in my rotation. And I think this is going to be a good option for a lot of you, especially if you don't go out and run super long distances all the time. Let's say you run 5K, 10K, even up to 10 miles like I did. The Hoka Solomar is gonna work pretty well for you. Where it's really gonna work well for you is if you like to go to the gym, maybe do some weights and then jump on a treadmill or jump on the treadmill first and then lift weights. It is going to be really convenient to have a shoe that you can do it all in, not have to worry about changing before you do another activity. I know that in some of my other running shoes, I won't do anything in them other than run. Like even if I want to walk after my run, I'll change my shoes, put on another pair of shoes and go for a walk in it just because I don't want to put non-running miles in those shoes. So if you ever do something silly like me doing that, the Hoka Solomar, it's gonna save you some time, it's gonna save you some stress, and it actually feels remarkably good underfoot. So I didn't expect it, but the Hoka Solomar is a pretty good shoe. Yes, it does have a firmer ride than what I generally like to go for in my easy day shoes, but I got used to it and I was actually looking forward to picking this shoe up and taking it out. And of course, because of its weight, it's very easy to turn over the legs and get this shoe moving a little faster. All right, guys, let me know. Do you have a shoe like this in your rotation? Is the Hoka Solomar something that would interest you? Have you ever thought about buying a shoe that is good for more than just running? Let me know in the comments. Oh, and if you have made it this far in the video, why don't you drop the plant emoji in the comments because the Solomar is a vegan shoe. And of course that plant emoji just lets me know that you have stayed all the way to the end of this video, which I really appreciate. That's it for now. This has been my review of the Hoka Solomar, $125 at Roadrunner Sports. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.